Hi, everybody. Lee Lowell here, smartoptionseller.com. Today is Saturday, October 9, 2021. Hope everyone is doing well. Welcome to another edition of our Saturday Synopsis. What we like to do here in these videos is take a look at the charts. We look at the indexes. We look at individual stocks. And I try to show you what I'm seeing out there, where a stock has been, where a stock may be headed in the future. I'm here to try to help you become a smarter, smarter and more profitable stock and options trader. Uh, we concentrate on trading options in our service and our website, but we always have to know about the stocks first. That's, that's the most important thing. Having an idea of where a stock may be headed is the best way to engage in an option trade. You can't trade options unless you know where the, what the stock is going to do or not do. All right. So it's very important to understand what stocks are doing. The way that I uh, understand that and the way that I create my trades is by looking at stock charts. That's how I, uh, that's how I figure out what's going on in the market. It's called technical analysis, stock watching, chart reading, whatever you want to call it, technical analysis. That's one way of figuring out where a stock is going. Another way is fundamental analysis. That's more about looking at the internals of the company. How are their sales? How are their earnings? What's their dividend payout like? All that kind of good stuff, the underlying details. I like to look at the charts because I like to see where the stock is moving, where stock's trending. And, I, and I'm in the belief that every, every part of the information about a company, even the fundamental analysis parts of the company is all reflected in, in the charts. Okay, so that's all I need pretty much. And so what I wanna do is try to help you read charts as well. So we do these Saturday synopsis videos to try to help you figure out different ways to look at a chart, look at patterns, look at technical uh, indicators, moving averages, all that good stuff. So what we like to do here is we look at the, the indexes first, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, and the Dow, and then we dial it down to individual stocks. So let's just jump right in here. And we always take a look at the S&P 500 first as represented by the SPY, which is the exchange traded fund that trades like a stock gives a good overview of the of the broad market in general. Now, for those of you just tuning in, this is what I use to look at charts. This is my e-signal platform. You can, you can look at charts on many different platforms, and, and some of them are free out there. This one I use called e-signal. I believe it's a pretty good platform. I've been using it for over 20 years now. And um, on my charts, I usually look at a daily bar chart. Each one of these black vertical lines is one day's worth of trading. I can open it up a little bit more, make it easier to see. <clears throat> and on my real estate here, my screen is, it dials it back to about two years in time of daily chart, of daily trading activity. If you're a hyperactive trader, you can look at one minute charts. And when the screen pulls up here, each one of these bars now is one minute's worth of trading. So a one minute chart is going to look a lot different than a daily chart we get a lot more history we want to see where a stock is trending which way it's moving is it moving up is it moving down momentum is a big deal in the market because everyone's playing uh the same stock everyone's looking at the same chart formations so everyone pretty much sees the same thing and if they're knowledgeable enough they look at the same indicators see which way a stock's trending so momentum is very big in the stock market and a, and a stock will trend in one direction until something comes along and moves it in another direction. That's typically either you know a bad earnings announcement, which comes every three months, or some other news item within the company, or just general market news. Geopolitical news can always move markets, but in the end, it's how well that company is performing is what's going to determine its price trend. If the company is creating good products, people keep buying those products, the company's sales and earnings keep going up over time, a stock will tend to move up in price over time. And on a chart that's moving from bottom left to top right, that means the stock is moving up. So let's take a look at the general broad market. Now, typically, Individual stocks, if there's nothing really going on with that company, they'll tend to follow which way the indexes go, okay? And if the indexes are moving up, typically a stock will move up as well, even though there's no you know, major news going on with that company. So we like to really focus on the indexes here. Now, what you'll see on the chart is I've got certain things marked up. I've got channels here, um, W patterns. Down here is the RSI indicator. People ask me, Lee, what do you usually put on your charts? What are the indicators that you use? So I'll go over that briefly. 
do that each week. I know we have new people watching every week. On the chart, this is a daily open high low bar chart. Some people use candlestick charts. I don't use candlestick charts. I just use the open high low close bar. So each vertical line has a little dash mark on the left is where the stock open for the day. The high and low obviously is the top of the bar and the low of the bar is the, the low of the day. The bottom of the bar is the low of the day. And on the right side of each bar, there's a little dash mark. You can see this one right here. That's where the stock closed for the day. The closing price is very important, okay? And then so I have three moving averages on, on each chart. I have a blue simple 20-day moving average, and then I have this red simple 50-day, and then the green is the simple 200-day moving average, okay? So what I like to do is first you like to see the general direction of the stock or index obviously moving up since the pandemic last year, March 2020, stock market just had been steadily moving higher. Now we try to, what we try to do is in our service, in our newsletter, we're, we're looking for bullish patterns. We want stocks to go up. So we're always trying to time our entry to a good spot. And how do you do that? Well, if a stock's in an uptrend, you want to try to time your entry when it's on a pullback, okay? Even if you're going to be holding a stock for a very long time, I'm talking years and years, you know, where you get in really doesn't matter so much on the, in the short run because eventually, hopefully, the stock will go up over time. But if you're on a shorter time frame, your timing is a little bit more important. So when you're trying to time an entry, especially a bullish entry, you want to try to enter on a pullback. Well, how do you know if a stock's on a pullback or how do you know if a stock is entering a new full-on bear move? Well, in the end, you don't. You don't. But you have to go with, with history. You have to see what a stock's been doing in the past, and hopefully that history will keep going. Now, if there's no major news on a company, you know, their earnings aren't coming out for a few months and there's nothing else happening in the background, the stock will typically keep going in that same direction. And when you want to time it the way that we do it, we look for pullbacks to either the 20 day or 50 day moving average. Now you can see on the S and P 500, um, every time it do either pull back to the 20 day or 50 day moving average, it will bounce. Okay. So if you're looking to time your trade, you want to look for a bounce or a pullback to the 50 day or 20 day moving average. Typically, most of the time it won't pull back to the 200 day moving average. That would be a pretty good sell off. So if you're going with what's been happening, if you're trying to time a trade, you can look for a pullback here. You can look for a pullback here. And so every time it goes up and pulls back. So what I try to do is I try to get a gauge for where stocks going and where it might move to next. Now we had a situation where the general stock market had been going up, 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 up. And then right around September 1st, we've entered into this new pullback. So for the last month, a little over, about six weeks now, the market has been in a pullback. Okay, something came along and knocked it out of its uptrend. And what was that? Why did it, why are we seeing this pullback now all of a sudden? Why wasn't the pullback here or pullback here? I think there's a few things. Number one, we have seasonality in the stock market. In, in, in general, in the, in the long run, the three months, the three worst months for the stock market is typically August, September, and part of October. Okay, so we're seeing some seasonality here. It's a little bit deeper pullback than, than probably the last couple of years that I have to go back in time. But August, September, part of October, you can typically see pullback. So I'm not really concerned so much with this pullback. Um, other news items, you know, COVID's still out there. Uh, inflation's creeping up in, in the U.S. At least there's, you know, rumblings about the debt ceiling and, you know, the Federal Reserve that might start um, taking interest rates higher. So there's a lot of this narrative out there that can spook the market in the short run. But in the in the end, it's all about how well are the companies within the indexes performing. Are they still selling their products? People are still buying. Earnings are going up. Earnings are going up quarter after quarter. That means the stock prices have to move up. Move up. But in the short run, you get these, these news, news items, seasonality that can take the market down for shorter periods of time. If we, if, we, if we go back out to the monthly chart where we can look back to early 1990s, we can see the market just goes up over time. Even though there's news items out there, we had the financial meltdown, 
there's wars overseas, there's just, you know, COVID came along, but we can see how COVID was very short lived as far as the stock market goes. So you've got these narratives that are always out there, but the stock market will always pick itself back up. So what are we seeing right now? Okay. Let me take a quick look here. Now it was in the uptrend. Now it's in the downtrend. And I draw these, they're called channels. They're price channels. When a stock bounces for or a long period of time or a period of months, you can draw these trend lines that will help you gauge where a stock may pull back to or hit some resistance. And after like, you know, two months or so, you can connect the tops of the recent ranges, connect the bottoms, and you can project out with the lines. And you can see how the stock, this index, the S&P 500 has been bouncing in this uptrend. So if you're trying to time your trades, you can wait for it to bounce off the bottom leg. Or if you're looking to sell or get out of positions, you can wait to see if it hits some resistance at the top and it'll pull back. Apparently now, up on September 1st, it didn't bounce off the bottom and now it's created this new little downtrending channel here. So right now we're in a downtrending channel. If I was to get bullish and wanted to get long, now I have to wait for the market to come outside of this new downtrending channel, maybe trade sideways for a bit and start to move higher. Now we can see the downtrending lines that I've drawn this channel on Thursday and Friday this past week, so that was October 7th and 8th, 2021, the S&P 500 had a nice bounce up from the sell-off, has, has moved outside and above the downtrending channel. You can see it right here. These two days has moved outside of the downtrending channel. That's a good sign. That's something that's good. I like to see that. I need a little more confirmation, maybe another week's worth of trading outside some sideways action and or some upwards movement. So sort of in a hold pattern right now, um, for me, if I was to look to get long uh, or bullish on the stock market, because I, I, you know, we could get another pullback within the chat back within the channel. The more days it spends outside of the channel, either sideways or moving higher, the more confident that I would feel that the next leg of the bull market will be starting. Now, typically towards the end of October, November, December are usually pretty bullish times of the year. So I'm hoping that seasonality, the end of the year, will get that push higher. Let's take a quick look at the NASDAQ as represented by the QQQ. And we'll see what was happening there. Now, what I like to do is I haven't drawn my channel here. So what we'll do is we'll just, you know, you connect some of the you connect some of the tops, okay, of a recent range and you connect the bottom. So now you have this channel here. Okay, so the QQQ is represented by the NAS the NASDAQ represented by the QQQ has is still within the channel. Okay, it hasn't popped out of it outside of it. So we may see some resistance here and there's the potential for the stock market to keep coming down towards the lower end of this channel. Uh, we don't know that yet. Next week, maybe we get some really good news and we'll start to pop out of it and move higher again, or it will continue to move lower. So I'm not calling the end of this little sell off yet. I think we may have some more room um, to move on the downside. Um, you know, it's right now I'm treading lightly because once the stocks or markets in a downtrend, there's really no reason to step heavy into getting bullish until the market or the price action tells you to. It's all about the price action, right? We had the nice up move, but now it's telling me it's in a little downtrend. Why get into a, a bullish position while it's still showing you there's potential for more downside? It'll just frustrate you. You don't want to do that. So I'm waiting for some confirmation. I'm waiting for the market to pop out of this little downtrending channel and move some sideways action and maybe go higher. Let's take a quick look at the Dow, see what the Dow is doing. I don't pay as much attention to the Dow because it only has 30 stocks in that index. Uh, let's see what's going on. So the Dow is in a little bit of a downtrend, not as much as the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ. Um, you know, we can draw some support lines. Let's, you know, we have the resistance up here. You know, we, you draw the line, you got a little resistance on the top. And then you have, you know, you've got some 
maybe some support here. And it's in the eye of the beholder. Not everyone sees the same things. People can draw lines differently. It's not an exact science. It's not an exact science. So we've got this little bit of a channel here. We have the moving averages. So the Dow is sort of trading more sideways than anything right now. All time highs was here. So we're really not that far off the highs. So the Dow will probably get its cue from the, the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq. It's kind of moving sideways, not much happening with the Dow. Let's take a quick look at some, some individual stocks now as we typically do. But to sum up here in the indexes, uh, I'm waiting for a little more confirmation of sideways action or, or higher. Uh, there could be more selling involved at, at this moment in time until the market tells us otherwise. Let's take a look at some individual stocks. Take a look at Apple. We typically tend to look at the more popular um, high volume stocks. Okay, so this is Apple. What can we say about Apple? Oh, and I forgot to mention my technical indicator down here is the RSI. It's a 14 day RSI indicator. It's an overbought, oversold indicator. Um, the default is the 75 and 25 levels. It's from zero to 100. 100 would be the most overbought a stock can get. Zero is the, the, the most oversold it can get. The default numbers are at 75 and 25. You can see the vertical, the horizontal lines here. I've moved my lines out to the 80 and 20 level to give me even more of a, an opportunity to see if a stock is overbought or oversold. And it will bounce within that range. It doesn't mean when it's overbought, it doesn't mean it's going to drop right at that moment in time. It could take a little while. And when it's oversold, it doesn't mean it's going to reverse higher right then and there. It's just giving you an advance warning that a market's a little overheated or a little oversold. Just keep an eye on it. But for now, um, we're looking at Apple. Here's the price action. Here's some a channel that I drew. It has dropped below the channel. It's still remaining above the 200 day moving average. Apple's kind of, the chart's a little ugly. It's not in a perfect uptrend. You have ups and downs and ups and downs. It's, it's still moving upwards, but not as strong as the general indexes. So Apple's a little bit ugly here. Um, you know, it's it tried to pop above the channel, has fallen back below the channel. It's, it's trading below the 20 day and 50 day moving averages, but still above the 200 day. So Apple will probably meander, you know, sideways here for a little bit. Um, the RSI, not completely oversold, but certainly in a downtrend. So Apple, you know, I, I wouldn't say bullish or bearish strongly in either direction right now. It's just kind of moving sideways here. So if you're trying to get in, it might frustrate you a little bit because it doesn't have a lot of follow through so much on either direction. It goes up, it goes down. So Apple, not, not so interesting for me at the moment. Let's take a look at Tesla. Tesla is still in this, uh, I drew this uptrending channel not that long ago. So it's stuck in this uptrending channel, kind of hovering near the highs. It's above all the moving averages, which is good. And you also like to see which way the moving averages are sloping. Right now they're all sloping upwards. That means the stock has good upwards momentum. If the, if the moving averages are sloping downwards, that means the stock is probably moving down as well. So you kind of want to wait for a little bit of a turn before you really engage in a, in a new bullish position. But, but Tess has been in this channel. The next possible move will probably maybe come down to the downside a little bit, maybe a little reversal, not too much. It may try to tag the 20 day or 50 day or come all the way down to the uptrending bottom leg of the channel. Hard to say, or it could just keep moving up, but Tesla definitely in an uptrend. So having more of a bullish position is probably a smarter bet than having a bearish position. Um, Tesla's moving upwards. Uh, RSI, not really oversold, overbought, just kind of in the middle. So that's not telling us anything either. So bottom line is I, I would rather be bullish than bearish on Tesla. Let's take a look at Amazon. And you know, it's all about trying to look at the patterns, look at the channels, see what the stock's doing. Where's the trend? Where's the price action? That'll help you get into a trade at a better time. Okay. So Amazon, and we can always get rid of these lines and make new ones because the pattern is still playing out here. It's just stuck in this very, very long channel. 
okay? It just, it can't really break itself free from, now where you wanna draw the lines, you can connect the extreme bottoms of, of past moves and try to connect where most of the tops have been. So you can see Amazon popped above the channel, but then it came back in, it had this earnings um, washout right here. And then it's just kind of been bouncing around kind of hugging off the moving averages. So Amazon still trading within this wide range. Um, you know, it is very expensive. So there's not much happening either way. Yes, you can maybe do some intraday trading or a couple weeks, but not much in the long run for me at the moment on Amazon. Let's see what other stocks we have that are worth noting. We look at Oracle. We love Oracle. We have a put sell on Oracle. And Oracle's just in this nice uptrending channel. Had a blast off here yesterday, Friday, October 8th. Let's see if that's all-time highs for Oracle. Yep. So Oracle's making has made all-time new highs. This is the monthly chart. So here, um, Oracle's just looking strong. The R size is not overbought yet, so there could be more upside to come on Oracle. Um, you may have, may have a little bit of a pullback because this is a pretty good move here. This last week of trading has bucked the trend in the overall market. Oracle strong. Uh, we sold put option on Oracle in our service, which we like. So this is working out for us. Oracle, let's take a look at Cisco. Cisco, I, I like the company as well. Getting close to possible put sell position, but it's in this downtrend. Okay, it's in the downtrend. So it hasn't told me yet that it's ready to start a new uptrend. You know, the 200-day moving average is the next line in the sand. Moving down in the RSI, <clears throat> um, so it could be a potential for the next leg higher. I'm watching it for a little bit more. Let's take a quick look at, and I've been talking about Clorox of late, why you would not want to get into a bullish position on a stock until it shows you that it's ready to move up. Now, Clorox was a darling during the pandemic. And then last August, it just started in this downtrend, which it's still in now. So trying to pick bottoms, trying to, you know, it's a great company, um, but why get long on a stock while it's in a downtrend? A lot of people don't watch stock charts. They just know that Clorox is a great company. I'm gonna buy in. I'm gonna buy in now, um, but Eventually, maybe you'll be right and the stock will go up. But let's just say you bought here or here. Well, the stock's still going down. Even though it's a great company, you're not getting anything out of it because it's not giving you any price appreciation. So if you're looking to get into a stock, at least look at a stock chart to see which way the stock is moving. Now, Clorox has sort of entered this sideways channel. It had a nice move down and now it's moving sideways. So maybe it's found a bottom here. Maybe they figured... The market's figured $160 a share is the bottom for Clorox. It's not going any lower. It's tried a couple times to get through 160, not happening. So maybe the next move here is to move back to the top of the channel and maybe eventually get out of the channel and at least above the 200-day moving average. So I know Clorox is a great company, but I wouldn't buy in yet because it's not showing me it's time to buy in yet. When will that happen? When would I feel good about buying in? If I was to buy Clorox, I'd have to see it move out of the channel and probably above the downtrending 200-day moving average. So somewhere between you know, $185, $190 a share is probably when I would consider, okay, it's safe to get into Clorox. It's got new mo upwards momentum and that should keep going. Yeah, I may miss buying at the bottom, but I'll be buying at a time when it's got the momentum behind it. But if you're really itching to get in, then I always say you could nibble. You can buy a few shares, buy a handful of shares. Don't you know blow everything that you have. Buy a little down here. And if you're right, you can say, yep, I bought the bottom. And if not, then you wait for confirmation. All right, so that's some of the things we look for. Downtrending stock, even though it may be a great company, you wanna time it a little better and wait for it to show you some upwards momentum. Um, let's take a look at my list here see what other stocks we have. Microsoft still looking pretty good. Um, you know, we had, it was in this channel, you know, it, it we drew the channel way back here, went above the channel and you know, it's had a little pullback with the general market, but still pretty strong. Intel, 
Intel just not doing much for me. I wouldn't really do anything with Intel. It just kind of has some downwards momentum. China moves, it's been moving sideways here. So maybe it's sort of finding a bottom. You can see a little bit of a rounded bottom potential. Um, maybe we'll start to move higher. But for me right now, I, I'm, I'm just keeping an eye on Intel. It's not telling me that it's really time to get a full on bullish position yet. So I'm just watching the price action. And for Intel, not so uh, convinced that it's, re it's time yet. Let's see what else we have. Oh yeah, AMD we always look at. We look at AMD. So AMD, so I had some W patterns, some channels, a bigger channel. All these things that you can draw on your chart to help you gauge when it may be time to get in and or get out. Uh, we can see here, so let's let's take these lines off. And it, it's okay to remove old lines. I mean, stocks move in different directions all the time. And we can see we had support here. So it looks like AMD's got pretty solid support right around the 100 level. Okay, you can draw a line here. All right. So it has support. It tried to break down below 100. One, two, three, four, almost four times it tried to break below it. Couldn't get it. It was rebuffed each time. So we're hoping that AMD will, will continue to move higher. Um, it's got a little bit of a down look to it. Um, we can also draw sort of the, the triangle here. Typically, this would be a bearish position where a bearish pattern where it keeps moving down along the top line here and eventually it'll pop through support, but it's got good support here. So I'm waiting to see what's going to happen. AMD might tick a little bit tighter in this end of the triangle here and then pop above it or pop below. Uh, so I, I, I'm holding out here. Now, the next round of earnings is happening pretty soon. Um, earnings is going to get underway starting next week. And for the next few weeks, we're going to have lots of companies putting out earnings. So I don't really like to get into position before the earnings announcement. So especially with AMD, I think it announces earnings towards the end of October, maybe the third week of October. So I may just sit and watch, see what AMD does. If it fulfill this, the rest of this triangle here and move, start to move up, or move down and and nothing may not happen until it's earnings announcement so it may just be storing up this energy until earnings comes out so that's amd uh, we had a position on it and we took profits on it and now we got out let's see what else we have we looked at uh, netflix netflix is doing pretty good been bucking the trend was in this channel for a long period of time finally moved above it was hugging the the 20 day moving average and it's blasted off. So we have all time new highs. Let's just make sure that's right. Yep. All time new highs for Netflix. Netflix is strong. Netflix looks good. If you, if you're trying to time your next bullish entry at this point, you may want to uh, see if it pulls back to the 20 day moving average. If you, if you, if you're trying to time a bullish trade, but Netflix, Netflix looks pretty good as a bullish contender. Um, Procter and Gamble, Walmart. Let's take a quick look at Walmart because I personally got into some Walmart um, down near the lows last week. Uh, it was just too much of a pullback for me not to get in. Now I say, why would I want to get long a stock um, when it's in a downtrend? Well, sometimes I go outside of my own rules, gut reaction. But the re main reason why is because the RSI got into extremely oversold levels. Hit down in the 20s here. 20 on the on the RSI. That was my cue that, you know what, Walmart's a great company. If I want to hold Walmart for the long run, I'm holding for the long run. And every once in a while, pullbacks are just too extreme. And you could nibble. And that's what I did. I nibbled. I bought some shares on the lows here. And look, it's popped back. Okay, got in around down here, 136, 137 or so. And now it's around just under 140. So it's moving back up. Walmart could certainly continue to move back down, but for me, I was taking a calculated risk. I bought some shares, but I know in the long run, Walmart will, will, will go back up over time. For now, I may have to sit and wait a little bit, but you know, that was a personal uh, decision that I made. What else do we have? Disney. Everyone loves Disney, right? Hard not to love Disney, but right now it's in this channel was in the uptrend, downtrend, sideways trend. That's how stocks move. They go up, down, sideways. So Disney's sort of in the sideways action here. If it can get above 
I don't know, maybe 185 or so, it may have the, the momentum to keep moving higher. You got the seasonality of the end of the year coming, so we, we may see a lot of stocks start to move higher. So Disney's sort of in this channel here. Um, I, I would probably wait till it starts to move up, maybe in the 185, 190 level, to see if I wanted to, or when I would want to get long some of those shares. Um, what else we got? So the pharmaceutical stocks are getting hit pretty good. We've taken a position in Bristol Myers, a put sell position, had a lot of cushion right here. Also was way oversold. That was around $60 a share. We sold some put options, strike prices down here. We gave ourselves a lot of cushion stock still moving down Friday. Yesterday had a big move down. I'm not really sure what that was all about. Getting back down into oversold territory again. Um, you know, this is, an extreme move for a company like Bristol Myers. This is Bristol Myers. Um, you know, we took a stab on a put sell. You know, we may have to roll the trade, invoke some defense mechanism, but not yet. So we're watching, waiting. Um, Eli Lilly, let's just look at some of these healthcare stocks. L Eli Lilly's in a down move. Um, Pfizer. Pfizer in a down move. Johnson & Johnson. All these pharmaceuticals are in the downtrend. It's, kind of hovering around the oversold areas. Eventually, these are going to be buys. Eventually, all these stocks will be buys. Now, Merck had came out with the news that they have a pill that is, is like the COVID vaccine, but in a pill format. So that's why Merck jumped big this past week. So Merck's bucking the trend of the rest of the pharmaceuticals. But in general, pharmaceutical companies will be bought back up just it's the timing. When is it going to happen? So keep an eye on those. We're keeping an eye on Bristol Myers as we have a position there. Facebook. Um, we had a spread position in Facebook that we got out of. I didn't like the move down. I didn't like the news headlines that were coming out of Facebook uh, the, the last week or so. Plus, they had outages. I said it's time to get out. You know, sometimes you're wrong. Not every position is going to work out. We got out of Facebook. So it's in this downtrend. Probably going to find support here at the 200-day moving average. But, you know, Facebook right now, I, I've got nothing on Facebook. I don't like the down move. I don't like the news out coming out of the company right now. So there's nothing for us on Facebook. Google, always looking strong. Google just keeps going up. Uh, what else do we have? That's about it. Um, for our individual stocks, the ones we like to look at. Costco, always a strong stock. Got some sideways action. McDonald's, let's take a closer look at McDonald's. McDonald's looks good, was in the sideways action, has a nice rounded, nice upwards moving stock. All the moving averages are sloping upwards. The RSI is right in the middle, so it's not overbought, not oversold. So McDonald's has some good momentum behind it. If you're looking to get long, eh, maybe see if it pulls back to the 20-day or 50-day as a timing mechanism. But in the long run, McDonald's, you know, is moving up. Strong stock. All right, so quickly one more time. SPY. For me, I need to see some more bullish action outside of the downtrending channel and like to see it start to move up. So I'm going to be a little bit more of a wait and see attitude. We've got earnings coming up in the next few weeks, so it could be a little hands off for now. All right. So that's what I'm seeing in the market. Um, that's it. I, I hope this is helpful for you all to see how you can look at look at stocks, draw patterns, check your moving averages. Just just watch the price action. It'll help you quite a bit. All right. Let's take a quick look at um, our website here. Smart Option Seller website. We're big put option sellers here. If you want a free copy, if you know nothing about selling put options, just download our free guide. Go to our website, click on the Put Selling Basics. This is a guide that I wrote. Put your name and email address here. We'll send you a free copy. Here's our services tab. You can click on any of these things. Anything, anything all this other free stuff is, is to help you all, give you some good options information. Our paid services right here. We have two newsletters and our coaching sessions if you need a little help, okay? So I hope this video has been helpful. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment um, if you would. I love hearing from you. Send me an email. I'll always answer your emails. And um, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Hit that red subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner of this video. All right, that's all for me today. We're getting on close to 35 minutes now. Um, I hope everyone has a great weekend and a great trading week ahead. I hope to see you back here next Saturday. 
This is Lee Lowell signing off.